This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Chapter 8 deals with employment income. This will be the income that you receive via a salary, the necessary expenses that you can claim, and the benefits in kind that come with some of the jobs that people do. Now, we need to first deal with um, a, a situation um, that has arisen over time uh, where people have claimed to be employed when they're actually self-employed and vice versa. So why do we need this? Well, an employee is taxed under employment laws. Okay, so if you are employed, you are taxed on what you actually receive. Your expenses, they're difficult to claim. They have to be wholly, exclusively and necessarily incurred. That's a, this is the bit that makes it very difficult to claim them. The tax is collected through pay as you earn and deducted at source monthly or whatever uh, sometimes it's monthly sometimes it's weekly and you pay uh, class 1 NIC and if you look in the tax tables you'll see uh, how much that is now if you are a person who is self-employed it's all done on an accruals basis unless you've chosen the cash basis of course expenses are wholly and exclusively only and we've looked at the chapter uh, previously about um, adjusting profits for things that are not wholly and exclusively you pay the tax under self-assessment twice a year 31st of January, 31st of July. So the revenue don't get a regular source of income. And you pay class 2 and class 4 NIC, which if you look in the rates for NIC, are different to class 1 national insurance contributions. Yes, they pay the same amount of tax, 20%, 40%, 45%, but it's collected differently. The NI is different and what you can and can't claim is different and therefore sometimes it's more advantageous to be one of these than to be one of those or vice versa so over a um, period of time rules have been put into place regarding the uh, whether or not somebody is or somebody isn't and it's been done under the law now thankfully at this level of your tax exams you don't need to know what all those legal cases are but should you decide that tax is your thing and that you want to go on and do tax um, uh, as, a, as a profession and you want to take your CTA exams then you'll need to know what the law is so let's have a look at the principles and again we've got what's known as a, um, um, a mnemonic here um, we came across one of those before uh, a mnemonic is where uh, we have certain uh, letters which will then help us to remember various different aspects. Um, so these principles are taken into account to decide whether somebody is employed or somebody is self-employed. Um, one of the things that I, I don't know whether this uh, is applicable at the time of, of, of watching, but at the time of recording, um, there are several cases going through law at the moment, one of them being Uber drivers, whether Uber drivers are technically self-employed, which is what Uber says they are, or whether they are employees. And the same goes for the delivery guys, the, um, uh, I don't know what delivery guys you, uh, uh, um, Deliveroo, um, all of those kind of things. The drivers, the riders of the bikes with the food on their backs, are they employed or self-employed? And there is currently some uh, legal cases going on um, in the UK regarding those situations that you may want to um, look up. I'm sure if you Google them, you, you'll find them. Or alternative 
uh, search engines are available. Um, but if you have a look, you may find some information regarding this employment, self-employment, just to get some background into your head. Now, if you are in employment, then it's a contract of services. And if you are self-employed, it's a contract for services. These sort of things you might get tested for in a multiple choice question. There's never going to be a big question about it. So his chore is to help you to remember this. So an individual who is employed gets benefits such as sick pay, holiday pay, maternity pay, all of those kind of things. H is for holiday pay. I, are they an integral part of the business and not merely an accessory to it? So are they there every single day? So an employee would be there every single day. Somebody who comes into the business to maybe do some plastering or to repair some plumbing is not an integral part of the business. They're an accessory. They've come to repair or mend something or build something. They will come, they will go. So they would be self-employed, but the employee who's there every day would be employed. So an employee is obliged to work personally exclusively for their employer and cannot hire helpers or send in a substitute. So I could not, if I was an employee, send in my husband to do this work on my behalf. Okay, You can't send somebody else in to do your job. Whereas if you were self-employed and you knew you were a bricklayer and you knew somebody who was equally good at building walls with bricks and a job had to be finished, you could send somebody else in to do your bricklaying. I think you're kind of getting the idea. Um, the employer controls the manner and the method of work. If you have a job, they tell you what to do and when to do it. If you're self-employed, that's not normally the case. Specific hours. They're normally fixed and you're paid by the hour of the month or the week, whereas somebody who's self-employed uh, would normally f send in an um, um, uh, a contract saying, if I do this and I will do that and I will do this, you will pay me. How long it takes is up to me. Obligation. This is one of the main ones. Obligation. You are obliged to go to work every day. Okay and you are not in a position to decline work. If you are self-employed, you can decline. You don't have to do. So if somebody says to says to me, I, Jill, I'd like you to teach this there, and I'm going to pay you this amount, and I could look at it and say, yep, yeah, that fits in my diary. Yep, yeah, I'm capable of doing it. Um, and yet yeah, that's a fair amount, and it would take me X amount. And yep, yeah, that's fine. Or I could go, hmm. Not so sure. Mm, no, and I could decline it. OK, now, obviously, if you continue to decline work, you're not technically self-employed, but you get the picture. Um, reward. Self-employed, there is risk, but you get the reward. If you risk and you decide to take that job, even though you think it might be a bit difficult to do, the reward will be yours because they're going to pay you. Um, probably over and above the market rate and somebody who works um, as an employee normally doesn't provide their own equipment those are the new uh, his chore uh, multiple choice questions more than anything else um, you, it's a probably possibly maybe rule apply to the scenario that you've got that the same rules apply as when we did it before. So what is accessible? Now this is emolument is a technical term. And it relates to basically what you've received as income. And these emoluments include your wages, your salaries, your bonus, your commissions, um, and any benefits and tips, that sort of thing. So it's basically a technical term a tax technical term for everything that you receive from your um, from your employment expenses these are the ones that you are allowed okay wholly exclusively and necessarily so contributions to a pension scheme 
There is a chapter on pensions, so make sure that you look at that. 